Mr. Hassan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And just to echo uh, Senator Lankford's point, um, one observation I have is that DHS uh, often has very good relationships with Homeland Security personnel and emergency preparedness folks in the states. Uh, the outreach to uh, the folks who run elections in the states is kind of a new thing for DHS, and I would urge you to marshal the resources that you have good relationships with in the states uh, to try to foster that bridge to the elector election officials, uh, because it, we all share this sense of urgency about 2018. Um, I wanted to follow up on Chairman Johnson's very important question on the ISIS uh, diaspora. Uh, not all ISIS members are going to die on the battlefield, as you have all pointed out, and we're going to need a robust strategy for dealing with ISIS foreign fighters once the so-called caliphate truly fails. So to that end, Secretary Duke, I want to ask you about ISIS team of Homeland Security investigation officers that are now deployed to 30 U.S. embassies and consulates. These teams of law enforcement officers, which we call visa security teams, are tra trained counterterrorism professionals who aid the State Department's consular offices as they make decisions about whether to grant U.S. visas to foreign nationals. Given the chance that many ISIS foreign fighters will return to their home countries, it's going to be even more important that we have these visa security teams at more than 30 U.S. diplomatic posts where they are currently deployed. Can you commit to expanding the number of posts at which visa security teams are located? Uh, I should note that my staff is working with the chairman and ranking member staff to do that, but is that something the department can commit to us on? Um, we're reviewing that right now, um, so I don't know if, if more are needed. Additionally, we're, we're increasing vetting overall, but that has been very useful to us. Well, I, we, we would look forward to working with you on that because I think there are a number of us that think that 30 isn't enough and, and we want to do everything we can uh, to partner with you on that. Uh, I also wanted to touch on the issue of white supremacist and neo-Nazi threats. Uh, I want to echo uh, my colleagues from California's um, concerns. Uh, Mr. Chair, I think we need an absolutely thorough oversight effort in this regard. Uh, focus specifically on the threats posed by white supremacists and neo-Nazis. Um, I want to turn to you, uh, Director Ray, because there are some complexities that go to domestic terrorism versus international terrorism. Uh, from an initial review, the FBI's ability to prevent and address, address acts of international terrorism appears to be very different from their ability to prevent and address domestic terrorism. For one, while domestic terrorism and international terrorism are defined in statute, as you pointed out, there's no criminal offense or charge, as I understand it, of, do of domestic terrorism, although there is an international terrorism offense and charge on, on the books. Uh, Neil Cadiel, the former acting solicitor gen general, said in a media interview that if the Charlottesville attacker had emerged from his car and announced that he carried out the attack in the name of ISIS, then he could have been charged with international terrorism. Is that true? And would that be the case even though the attacker was American? We can charge uh, ISIS supporters, whether they're American or, or foreign, under the various material support statutes and things like that. Yeah. Uh, I will say, uh, Senator, I just want to make sure that I'm not um, confusing the committee in some way right. about our effectiveness in the domestic terrorism space. Our approach in the terrorism arena in both <laughs> international terrorism and domestic terrorism uh, and this is a product of the immediate post 9-11 era, is to look for every possible tool we have. And a lot of times the best charge may not, even in the international terrorism arena where we have a statute, may not be the terrorism charge. There may be reasons why it's simpler, easier, quicker, uh, less resource intensive, and you can still get a long sentence with some of the other offenses. And so that's really the approach we've been taking on the domestic terrorism front, where a lot of times there are 
good, effective, very serious charges we can bring. And so even though you may not see them right. from your end as a uh, domestic terrorism charge, they are very much domestic terrorism cases that are just being brought under other, other criminal offenses. No, and I, I do understand that, but I also am concerned about making sure that we are doing everything we can to go after these domestic terrorism groups who promote violence. So. I, I, I've just been trying to think through, let's say we had a case of neo-Nazism terrorism. There's nothing, as I understand it, the, the defining factor for a charge of international terrorism can be whether the idea is, the, the ideology that is being espoused comes from outside of the United States. So there's nothing American or inherently domestic about Nazis. So if a neo-Nazi carries out a mass murder while yelling Heil Hitler, that would certainly appear to be an ideology that originated from outside of America's borders. So could they be considered international terrorists? Senator, I'd have to think about that one a little bit. I'm not sure that we would call that international terrorism, but we have brought neo-Nazi cases. We're going to continue to bring them when we have the, the proper predication and the elements of the offense. Um, and I have not been hearing from my folks that they've been, um, feel hamstrung uh, in that space. Uh, but as I said uh, to Senator Peters, you know, we can always use more tools in the toolbox uh, to try to be as effective as possible. Well, well, I thank you for that, and I think it just goes to the point that there are some real complexities here, and we want to make sure that we are giving you appropriate tools, recognizing the complexity of the domestic situation, but also the real danger of these terrorist groups. Uh, with that, I thank all of you for your service very much and for being here today. Thank you, Senator. Senator